Kia ora everyone and welcome back to Civilization 5. Today we're taking a look at the Shoshone, arguably one of the most underrated and fun civs in the game, led by the one who sits himself. Let's jump straight in and talk about them because I've got some really interesting stuff here in terms of strategy, but also their unique units. And I think the Pathfinder is actually one of the best unique units in the game. Let's talk what the Shoshone do uniquely. So, as I say, they have the Pathfinder, this guy right here. It replaces the Scout, so you will always get to use this unique unit if you're starting in the Ancient Era. It has the same combat strength you'll see here as a Warrior, the same number of movements, and roughly the same cost, so it's a much stronger Scout. But it is a fantastic exploration unit because of its unique promotion that it starts with. It enables you, when you find a Tribal Goody Heart, a Tribal Heart, to choose what you get from it. You get to pick the reward. It's insane. They also, as a, by means of introduction, have a unique uh, horseman unit here. It's unlocked in the industrial era. It's the Comanche Rider, so you get it after military science. It upgrades from a knight and will upgrade into a land ship. Um, it is, of course, a mounted melee unit. It has five movements, so one of its strengths is it is very Fast. Of course, it can move after attacking. Um, and like normal horse units, it has a 33% uh, combat penalty when attacking cities and no defensive terrain bonuses. But this guy is fast. Not particularly strong or useful, but very fast. So, also, the one other thing that you have to understand about the Shoshone is their unique civilization ability, because it combos quite well. The Shoshone have an amazing ability to span out and claim so many tiles capturing their capital. You'll see it there, and I'll show you it again soon. As soon as you settle your capital city, Mosonkane, it will jump out and grab an extra eight tiles. And that is not unique just to your capital. Every time you settle, you land grab like there's no tomorrow. I really can't stress this enough, and this is probably, although their unique scout is very good, this is the real strength of the Shoshone. Their ability to span out far and wide with great expanse. It really can't be overlooked. And we'll talk a little bit more about strategy for it later in the video. Before we do that, here it is again. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, wham! Look at that. Insane! Insane yield. So now let's talk strategy. And first up, I want to go back to the Scout, the unique Pathfinder, because there's a lot of strategy in this, and it's really important you understand how it works. So if you watch on screen now, you'll see me interact with this tribal goody hut that's just a few turns out of my reach, and you'll see the menu come up for my ability to pick any promotion. So when you play the Shoshona, you're going to want to pump out at least two of these Pathfinders, maybe three. And look at this. On screen now, you can see I can take my pick. I can have maps, I can have gold, I can have anything I want. Now, the good ones, of course, are that one, population, also culture, and there's actually a third strategy you can take here. If you take the unit upgrade, your Pathfinder will upgrade straight into a composite bowman, skipping the normal archer upgrade that you would get if your scout was upgrading into a ranged unit. So there's an ability there for you to really get some advanced military technologies as well, providing you have the prerequisites that you need. The other strategy would be to go hard on culture, and then go hard on population. And the reason why picking the cultural boost from the, uh, the, basically it's free culture, right? So you pick the cultural boost from the tribal huts, and then you use that culture to really advance your culture tree and pump out settlers fast. And this is where the synergetic uh, strategy starts to come through because you can use your pathfinders to generate quick population and quick culture, potentially, you know, faith as well. If you are interested in a religion, that's perfectly fine. But you use your quick culture to really push through the cultural tree. Speaking of, let's talk strategy for that, shall we? As I touched on earlier in the video, liberty is going to be your friend because settlers are your friend. Why? Well, because the Great Expanse gives us more land. So you can really aggressively either forward settle your opponent or play a more sim city, grab all the tiles, grab all the luxuries and improve them. So liberty is your friend here. You can see collective rule is going to be massive for you because you can get a free settler and half the cost. And then citizenship here as well will get you 
a free worker near the capital, which is really useful when you think about, okay, when I place a city, I'm getting, what, 8, 12 tiles. I'm definitely going to get some resources, so I'm going to need workers and builders to improve them as quickly as I can so that I can make the most out of all of this land. Therefore, it is a no-brainer for you to at least put these four policy picks into the Liberty Tree. Now beyond that, you could pick up perhaps one in uh, tradition. Obviously rationalism will be your friend as you move through the game, assuming you're playing a sciencey game. Um, there is also potentially some logic in the exploration tree if you want to perhaps settle a few extra cities down the line. Uh, there are some really good uh, colonial kind of policies that you can use in the mid game to move out to say some islands off the coastline, go out there fast, put a city down, it'll instantly grow to three pop, you'll instantly have some golden production bonuses, and you'll probably claim the whole island thanks to Great Expanse. So there's just one thing you could do to go through definitely the Liberty Tree, definitely the first four in that, uh, and then perhaps exploration could be a fun tactic. One other thing that I will just quickly mention uh, about the Liberty Tree is that the, uh, the policy in there that reduces the culture cost for adopting new policies for every city. You will you will have seen me select it in this video. It was one of my crucial four policies in Liberty. That one really matters because unlike a lot of civs in Civ 5, the Shoshone can potentially play a more wide game if you want to go for the land grab strategy. Of course, the alternative is you could say, well, I don't need to play the wide game because I'm grabbing a lot of land anyway, so I can just build up a couple of small cities. And that's totally fine too. It's not my recommended approach, but you could definitely have fun going through a tradition playthrough with the Shoshone, because as we know, tradition is very, very good. You can't really go wrong. Now that we understand Shoshone, let's talk how to win with them. Let's talk victory routes. So I think you probably have um, a mixed victory condition with the Shoshone, reason being they're actually a relatively well-balanced uh, sieve. I think they have an okay chance at a cultural or diplomatic victory, uh, a reasonable chance at science, and perhaps slightly more favoured actually for a domination victory coupled with science. Um, probably the most effective way to um, sort of combine all of their unique strengths, their their Pathfinder, their unique uh, military unit, the, the Camache Rider, um, and their Great Expanse, uh, would be, I would suggest anyway, to start strong, spread wide, grab as much land as you can, get your riders, accompany them with whatever uh, sort of anti-city unit you have, it's probably artillery at that point in the game for sieging, and then take some capital cities. That's probably the best way uh, I've found to play Shoshone. Uh, the other way, if you wanted to play more peacefully, would be uh, to start exactly the same, spread out wide, build your cities, connect all of the luxuries and all of the resources, and then build tall and go for a scientific victory. Um, one other small caveat is because the Shoshone grab lots of land, you do have a slight favorable win condition towards the score victory as well. Now it's not particularly fun, but if you want to see me uh, play around and cheese that, I uh, I did make a special video dedicated just to that. Now, before we end, I would finally like to talk about some things to avoid while you're playing the Shoshone, because I see people making some mistakes here and there's a few things that you really want to miss. So first up, you must build your pathfinders early on, okay? These things are so good, and if you're discovering an ancient ruin and not using a pathfinder, you're playing Shoshone wrong. Always build them early. Don't mindlessly rush with them, though. Yes, they're as strong as a warrior, but they're better at scouting. And with their scouting promotions, they'll become even stronger. And with their promotion pathway and their upgrade pathway, seriously, I wouldn't go to war with them. Uh, also, obviously, you don't want to expand too slowly, but also don't expand too close to warmongering sieves in single player, okay? B because you're grabbing so much land, you're gonna piss off the AI. Naturally, you're gonna piss them off. They're all gonna be mad at you because you're settling too close to them. That's the nature of playing Shoshone. If you're gonna settle too close to someone like Attila the Hun, or perhaps the Incans, you're going to be in trouble. So do take notice of who your early neighbours are, keep an eye on their war score, and don't be afraid to build a couple of archers to defend yourself. Uh, finally, I would say, uh, even though the Camache Rider is 
not a massively powerful unit, because it's so mobile, I'd recommend you pick up one or two anyway. They're useful for pillaging or for quickly running to defense of a city, and you never know when you might need them to support you. So always do just build a couple of them. They're not great, but I would suggest one or two. Uh, that concludes my Shoshone guide. Thank you very much for watching and joining me in today's Civilization V video. If you did enjoy it, please do consider leaving a like rating, and until next time, I'll catch you then.